Charlotte just said. Sasha Banks. Now to the back statement again. Now they're in the center of the ring. Now Charlotte's got nowhere to go. Sasha Banks night. Is it her night? She's the champion. Sasha's the champion. Here is your winner and the new WWE Women's Champion, Sasha Banks. What an incredible moment, Corey. Sasha Banks has realized dream here tonight at Raw. What an ovation. This place just came unglued. Sasha Banks, the new WWE Women's Champion. What? Welcome to the big time, Finn. Been a valiant effort by Finn Balor, but Roman Reigns has got him in his sights. Roman looks ready to devour Finn. Looking for the spear. Finn Balor from out of nowhere. Counters with the sling blade. Drop kick into the corner. Roman Reigns is in trouble. Finn's going to go up high. Iron, if you're on live support, I'd pull the plug and charge my iPhone. Welcome to episode number 14 of the Wrestling Gremlins podcast. I am Bobby. Unfortunately, I'm not here with Nick this evening. He uh, actually met up with Matt Hardy, and he has now been deleted. It's over. No, I'm just kidding, actually. Uh, He's handling some personal shit. He'll be hopefully back next week. But there was so much going on in the world of wrestling this week that I actually had to make a podcast for you guys. Uh, Man, I have to say, wrestling... Just in a whole, this whole Sunday through Tuesday was really, really well done. You know, the the Battleground pay-per-view, which I'll get into in a second, was really good. There was a few matches that kind of sucked, like, say, the Darren Young versus The Miz or Zack Ryder versus Rusev. But, you know, I guess even the Becky versus Natty, you know, that wasn't that great either. But the match, like, you know, with Sasha Banks having Bayley come out, that was a big deal. Bailey's been down in NXT for so long, and she's been doing so great down there. It's time for her to, you know, show her face and do something on the main roster. And I think when she actually gets officially called up and stays, she's going to be amazing. It doesn't hurt that she's from our hometown of San Jose, California. Well, that's what they bill her as. I'm not sure if she's from San Jose, but I know she's from the Bay Area somewhere. Um, yeah, the Wyatt's New Day thing, I think the Wyatt's had to win that match. New New Day didn't need it. They're still the champions. It wasn't going to hurt them to win or lose that match. It makes all the Wyatts look pretty strong when they break up. It, it was it was a good decision. And then even Ambrose. Ambrose winning kind of shows that, yeah, you know, everybody thought Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins were the guys. You know, all the times that Dean Ambrose had to eat shit, you know, losing, like, to Bray Wyatt from a fucking hologram or, you know, that TV explosion, the TV explosion thing, all that stupid crap. Or, you know, him losing – I can't say losing to Lesnar was a burial – but, you know, he lost to Lesnar. You know what I mean? Like, that WrestleMania, they should have had to get someone else where he had a chance. Or, you know, anybody else he's lost to, you know, the last year. It was actually, you know, something to solidate that he's a great wrestler and everybody knows it. So, I, I think it was a good decision. Um, did I want Rollins to win? Yeah. Even though I predicted Reigns because I thought, like, you know, the whole redemption storyline Vince is trying to give. I thought Reigns was going to win it. But, you know I mean? I'm happy that Reigns ate the pin. But uh, good for Ambrose. And then Monday Night Raw, you know, the first of the new era, the new look, the stage was different, kind of. I mean, I had a few new different things, which was nice. They moved the announce table. They uh, they also have a new theme, a new intro. 
even Michael Cole. Michael Cole was really good on this show. You know, I'm not sure it's because, you know, they had Corey Graves there to help him out. And Byron Saxton, you know, he kind of, you know, kind of snapped back a little bit. But I think that goes back to the days where Saxton and uh, Corey Graves had to work with each other. They knew each other very well. And also that Corey Graves is kind of someone who's been taught by Michael Cole. You know, in NXT, he's probably the one in the headset telling him what to say and how to say it and like what he shouldn't say. So they know each other all very well. That's why I was kind of mad that he didn't get teamed up, that Corey Graves didn't get teamed up with Mauro Ronaldo. But in the long term and bigger picture, I kind of see why they did it. You know, JBL has been horrible. But if he's getting hidden, you know, by the fact that he's with Mauro Ronaldo, who I think right now is the best announcer in the game. You know, I'm not trying to compare him to uh, Jim Ross because they're totally two different kind of animals, man. Like, Jim Ross is the best of his generation and maybe the best of all time. You know, I love Jim Ross. I grew up with him, you know, with the Attitude Era, you know, and all that stuff. You know, Vince was Vince was one of the first people that I got to hear, you know, him and, uh, you know, Gorilla Monsoon and Bobby the Brain Heenan and, you know, all those people back in the day, you know. But the main majority of who I got to listen to as a kid was, you know, Jerry the King Lawler and Jim Ross. And Jim Ross is the man. I mean, he gets you excited for things that doesn't, you know, that don't really matter. You know, but Mauro Ronaldo can do the same thing. There were some throwaway matches on SmackDown, even though I thought in a whole SmackDown was a really good episode. I think they're only going to get better. It, you know, the only thing I can really bitch about, which I'll get into later, is about American Alpha. They weren't there, and that was kind of disappointing. But maybe they just want to hold them off so you have a reason to watch next week. But I'll get into all SmackDown stuff in a minute. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I think having JBL and Otunga on there with Mauro Ronaldo, he can hide that they're not that great. You know, JBL used to be good when he started, but he, he's kind of tied. He can't really say a lot of the things he'd probably like to say. You know, you, like, you have a hard time even saying wrestler on there. You know, Vince doesn't want you to say certain words, and I think that handcuffs him a little bit. But Mauro Ronaldo is such a professional and such a, just a talent that he can hide all those flaws from those guys. And going back to Cole, you know, Cole has somebody who can actually really work with too. You know, Corey Graves, in my opinion – he has come leaps and bounds. I don't think he was ever bad, but he only gets better. And I think he's only going to get better still. Like, he's going to continue to get better day by day. And, you know, as much as Byron Saxon eats a lot of shit from a lot of people in the wrestling community, I mean, I think he has to play that role. That's what they tell him to do, and he has to do it. That's his job. You know what I mean? I work jobs, and I right now work a job that I don't like to do. But at the same time, I get paid to do it. And, you know, you can't fuck it up. You just got to do what you're paid to do. So I think that's what he's doing right now. I think he's there. He's like, yo, you got to be basically the bitch of the commentary crew. You're going to get punked out. And you got to act like you're just a happy, smiley baby face. And Corey Graves is going to knock on you all the time or JBL before. Even Cole knocks on him sometimes, you know. And, you know, he's there and he does his role really well. You know, he takes, you know, he eats a bowl of shit and likes it, I guess, as uh, Triple H and Vince like to say. I like the taste of eating your own shit, which is kind of weird. They would say that, um, but yeah, let's get in the let's get in the battleground, right? Um, I have them all different directions on this thing. I don't think it's really in order on the paper that I wrote down when we did the predictions. And for the predictions for the Wrestling Gremlin Podcast Championship, I came in second. Amanda is still your champion. Nick uh, still hasn't done so well, but he always says that he's never going to win the belt anyway. You know, I think he's going to be like the Daniel Bryan, or if Sami Zayn ever wins the belt, he'll be like that. He's going to be the baby face that always loses, and then somehow just gets on a hot streak and wins it, and everybody's going to love it. So, you'll get him one of these days, Nick. Oh, yeah, but getting into the show, Battleground. Um, the first match I'm going to get into right now, and it was, I'm not going to say it's the best match, but I think it was the biggest pop of the night. It was uh, Dana Brooke and Charlotte versus Sasha Banks and Bailey. I had no doubt in my mind that Sasha was going to win this, you know, regardless of who she picks. There's no reason that Dana and Charlotte needed to win this. It wasn't for the belt at the time. It was a tag team match. Sasha needed to win so she can get the title ma- uh, the title match. We assume it would be at SummerSlam, but they actually did it on Monday Night Raw, which, man, that match was great. Um, but, yeah, the biggest pop of the night, in my opinion, was when Bayley came out. And like I said, man, she's been in NXT for so long. She's been the, you know, the four horsewomen. You got Charlotte, Sasha, Becky, and Bailey. And Bailey's the only one who stayed. And in all actuality, 
I think she's one of the better ones. I'm not sure who I think is a better wrestler, her or Sasha. I think they're both amazing. You know, but so is Becky and Charlotte. They're all really, really good. And I think it was kind of fucked up that Bailey had to stay down there, being that she's been there for three years now. But they needed to keep something down there. Yeah, now they have Asuka, and I don't think Asuka's going to come out, come back up for a while, you know, because they need to keep somebody strong down there. But Bailey, Bailey deserves to come up, at least just for one shot, and then, you know, but go back to NXT, because I know they're going to have the takeover match between her and Asuka. But Bailey did a really good job on this. The fans ate it up, man. They, they've been dying to see Bailey for a while. And so have I. So is everybody, man. Bailey's just a lovable character. And I've said this about her being the new face and people always kind of consider like, Oh, look at John Cena. It's almost the same gimmick. We're like, Oh, I want everyone to be happy. I want to do good, blah, blah, blah. And it's not John Cena was force fed down our throat for God knows how many years now. The only time I thought he was super cool is when he was doing the thugonomics. I've said this on the show before we've seen John Cena be like, you know, the hustle, loyalty, respect, you know, I pretend to be a Marine, you know, I never give up character for so long now. It's just getting tiresome, you know, but, you know, they he wants to be that ultimate baby face where in all actuality, I think the two biggest baby faces in their company right now is Sami Zayn because Dan O'Brien's gone. He's just a GM now and uh, calling this CWC. But Sami Zayn, who's a great, great baby face, you know, he has people wanting him to win all the time and because he loses all the time and then he'll win some big matches like he did this pay-per-view. And then, you know, you got Bailey. Bailey resonates with everybody. It doesn't matter if you're some, like, you know, some big old dude who's in the metal or you're some kid like Izzy. You know, she just resonates with people and she makes you happy. She makes you, like, want to watch her. She makes you want her to win. You know, she sells really well. She gets the shit beaten out of her and she somehow comes back. She has that look of, like, you know, I'm never going to give up. I'm going to keep doing this. But at the same time, she has. She's lost by that. I'm not giving up, but getting choked out. But look, look at Asuka. Asuka put her in the Asuka lock and, you know, she passed out. So, you know, I, I think she's just that underdog that you always want to win. Even though she went on a pretty good hot streak as the champion, you know, when she lost it to Asuka, it was a big deal. You know, and when she won it, you know, from Sasha, that was, in my opinion, last year, like the match of the year. That was crazy. You know, so... And, you know, Bailey, when she comes up, she's going to be a star automatically. I don't think she needs to go like, you know, oh, I'm going to face, you know, Alicia Fox. So what you need to get over that way. No, you could honestly, if you wanted to, I think it might be a little quick, but you could automatically put her in a title match if you wanted to at SummerSlam. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, I helped you out, Sasha, but I've beaten you in this arena. Blah, 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 blah. Let me get a championship match. And, you know, and I think that would tear the house down because, like I said, I think that one match of the year, you know, that was great. Um... Yeah, Bailey came out though, and it was a great match. And Sasha made Charlotte tap out. Would not be the first time. <laughs> you know I mean like, or it wouldn't be the last time? I'll say that. Sorry, it wouldn't be the last time. But um, yeah, she taps out, and Sasha and uh, Bailey get the win. So good for them, man. Like, I'm good for Bailey. Good for Sasha. They're like best friends. It looks like I know they speak so highly of each other, and I'm sure Charlotte feels deep down that she's happy about it too. You know, I'm sure they all love Bailey. They're all buddies. Um, yeah, let's get into, uh, The Miz versus Darren Young. Oh, man, this match was fucking brutal. Um, not, like, in a good way, either. It was just hard to watch. Um, I, I like seeing Bob Backlund. I think he's hilarious. Um, Darren Young, I never thought he was great in the first place, so to make him great again is kind of a joke. And then, uh, you got Maurice and The Miz. I think they're a good couple to be together, you know, especially because they're already married. They work off each other pretty well. I mean, Maurice sometimes, man, she gets on your nerves, sometimes in a good way, sometimes in a horrible way. I, the thing I didn't like, was say uh, on SmackDown, how when she, when the Miz was getting hit with RKO, she didn't really seem like she cared. It's like, dude, if you're a manager, you got to give a fuck. But in this match, I didn't understand the finish. Like, it wasn't that the match was horrible. Like, it wasn't good by any means, but it wasn't like, you know, the utter dog shits. Like, I don't understand the finish. Like, she slaps Bob Backlund. Okay, Marie slaps Bob Backlund. And then she walks like 30 feet away, and then she falls down and acts like, oh, Bob Backlund, you know, pushed her or hit her or something. And they weren't even close. Backlund's shirt doesn't even get ripped all the way off. Like, what was that about? Like, was it like super glued to his chest or something? What the fuck was that? 
And then they go on the outside, and I'm not sure if they called it a DQ or was it a double count out. They never really explained that. But, you know, Miz goes out there, you know, and Darren Young, like, saw that the Miz, you know, pushed Backlund. You know, and, you know, Darren Young flips out, put him in the cross-face chicken wing. Looked like he was butt-fucking him. Uh, you know, whatever. This this match was nothing. And honestly, I don't even think The Miz needs the title. I've been saying this for a while. Like, The Miz, he's... he's he, I like The Miz. Like, dude, like, there's no fucking secret about it. I like The Miz. I think he's entertaining. But he has done nothing for this fucking championship. You can put this on someone else. Now, okay, say it's on SmackDown. Put it on a Baron Corbin. Put it on an Apollo Crews. Put it on an AJ Styles if you're not going to give Styles the championship. Give it to somebody who will make this belt relevant. I just don't see the point of keeping it on The Miz. I just don't see it. I don't, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you guys have a different opinion. But when you see The Miz come out there and he doesn't even put the belt on the line half the time, like say this match against Orton. Orton doesn't need the belt either because he's going to face Brock. But what if he did go in as champion at SummerSlam against Brock? You have the Intercontinental Champion against The Beast. You know, and Orton's a name by himself, but and that, that would just show even more that, like, damn, dude, like, he's been kicking ass. He's here to fucking take it to Lesnar. And, man, like, I know I'm jumping around a little bit, but that uh, highlight reel on Battleground of Orton and uh, Orton and uh, Jericho, you know, well, it takes uh, 20 suplexes to get to Suplex City. Well, it only takes one RKO to take him to Viperville. No enhancement needed. You know, I understand that Brock Lesnar failed to uh, to uh, piss test, basically, for UFC. They say it's for a estrogen blocker, and that usually happens when you're cycling off steroids. You know, but if you're not going to come out and fucking say it on Raw, what is the point of even saying it and, like, hinting at it through your promos? You know, go all the way in, dive head deep, and just go, like, right head first into it and be like, hey... He did fucking steroids, but it wasn't – we didn't give him the test. It wasn't on us, you know, or just don't talk about it like WWE has and don't have Orton say a damn thing. Do I think it was good for the fans to pop at it? Like when he said it, yeah, I guess. You know what I mean? Like because it was kind of a knock at him, man. It was kind of a kick in the dick. But d- d- was it really needed? That's the main thing. Was it really needed? I guess, you know, the interview itself was kind of boring in general, so I guess you needed something. So maybe that's why they did it. I don't know. I think Jericho did a good job in this whole uh, interview with Orton. Like, oh, what's up, Randy? Are you going to RKO me now? How about now? Are you going to RKO, RKO me out of nowhere? How about now? Like, I thought that was pretty funny. And, uh, you know, he, he, you know, and even like Orton saying, like, you know, I want my, uh, why'd you come back? Why'd you come back, you know, to face, when Jericho asked him, why'd you come back to face, you know, Brock Lesnar? He's going to beat the shit out of you, basically. And Orton rebuttals was saying, Oh, I wanted my return to be special. I didn't want it to be against someone like Fandango, you know, because when Jericho came back, he fought Fandango in his first match at WrestleMania, and he lost to Fandango. Like, it is what it is. You know what I mean? Like, it was a funny joke. Yeah, and I, I think that's needed to be said too. If you're gonna joke around like that, I think that was more. I don't want to say classy, but like, I mean, it showed a little more class than showing the whole oh, well, no enhancement needed. But you know, they're, they're both funny. You mean? Who am I to fucking say, like, that shit isn't funny? But I think if you're going to go in, you got to go in all the way with it. Um, all right, let's get another shitty match out the way. You got Rusev versus Zack Ryder. Um, I don't know what's up with Zack Ryder's push. I don't know. It's it's one of those things where he gets new music, he grows a little fucking facial hair, you know, he wins a few matches, and, like, he's some top fucking dude right now. He's not. He's still Zack Ryder, man. Like, I like Zack Ryder. Don't fucking hate me for saying it. I like Zack Ryder. You know, when he made the the true Long Island story, I thought that was hilarious. I think they should have pushed him then when he had a little bit of momentum. He won the U.S. championship. He's won the Intercontinental championship. Uh, you know, if you look at his career, he's had some pretty big championships, you know, and that's good for him, man. Like, he's had the tag team championship with Hawkins. You know, he's been U.S. champion. He's been Intercontinental champion. You know, he's had a pretty good career for someone people consider kind of a jobber, you know, so that's good for him. Um, but Rusev right now is just a beast, you know, and if you're going to have someone beat Rusev, I don't think it should be Zack Ryder. I think it should be someone else. Um, being Balor's doing something else. I can't say Balor. Oh, who would I have him go against and lose it to? Let me think really quick on the raw roster. Hmm. 
You know, I can't think of anybody offhand right now. Maybe it, it sounds funny to me, but say you wanted to have – say you wanted to have uh, Enzo and Kaz kind of do their own thing for a minute. You could have uh, Kaz win that. You know, they want to build Kaz to be this beast, right? Kaz can do it. Why not? I mean, who else can you sort of think of? There's a lot of people, I'm sure. You know, if I looked at the rosters, the only reason I can't think of anybody right this second is because they just put the brands up. So I don't want to say someone from SmackDown. Because you're not going to have Roman Reigns win the belt like that. You're not going to be like, oh, yeah, Roman Reigns, go beat the U.S. title, blah, 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 blah. I mean, I guess you could if they take him out of the universal picture. But I just don't see Reigns going for anything that's not the world championship at this point. Um... I'm trying to think of anybody else offhand that I can really think of. Um, Sami Zayn. How about that? I mean, if you're not going to have Sami Zayn go for the championship, what about Sami Zayn? Let Sami Zayn be the one that takes off for himself. Which would be funny because if you really think about the U.S. title, you know, it's been um, the guy who beat Cena was Alberto Del Rio, who's Mexican. Then you had Kalisto, who was Mexican. And then after that, was it Rusev, who's Bulgarian? And then if you had if you had Sami Zayn beat it, it'd be Canadian. So really, like the U.S. Championship just goes to all the nations. But I think it's great. I think it's awesome. <laughs> you know, but yeah, I think Sami Zayn would be a great guy to take it off Rusev. You know, he's that underdog. You no know, one's going to think he's going to beat him. But if you really look at the match he had with Owens, which we're about to jump into, because ah uh, man, this had to be match of the night. But, uh, yeah, I think Sami Zayn can take it off Rusev if they really want to do that storyline. Because they have to do something different now since they're breaking up the whole Owens versus Zayn feud for a while. I wouldn't mind seeing them actually team up at some point. Like, say, you know, Owens is getting jumped by somebody, Zayn comes in, or vice versa. Say Zayn's getting jumped and Owens comes in and saves them to become tag, like a tag team of some sorts. Like, say the club. Say the club starts beating the shit out of Sami Zayn. And then Owens like, you know what? Fuck this business shit. That was my someone I consider my brother. That's my best friend. I'm going to go save the day. And then you have, you know, Zayn and uh, Owens versus the club. If the club or, you know, the club, you know, beats, uh, like, wins the belts at um, at SummerSlam. Because, like, the New Day, like, they, you can't do a thing with that with the New Day. The New Day is just the over faces. Like, they're not going to be someone who jumps somebody. So it has to be like the club. The club has to beat them. You know, Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows beats the Shao Zane. Owen comes in and just saves the day. Make them a tag team that goes against those guys. I can see that. But I don't see it right now. But it could happen. But so, yeah, I think Zane should be the one that beats Rusev. Not Roman Reigns. <laughs> Um, okay, let's get into the match of uh, Sami Zayn versus Kevin Owens. Jesus Christ, man. This match, just by itself, was fucking amazing. Like, you could have made this the main event and I would have been happy. Because the way that this was set up, pop-up power bombs, saluva kicks, uh, the uh, the brain buster on the, like, the outside of the ring. Like, all the stuff they were doing. I mean, the one botch that Sami Zayn did was... Um, he goes on the, um, the sit down, you know, try to backflip off the rope thing that he does. Yeah, he botched it, whatever. Owens tried to save it a little bit, you know, and it kind of worked. But, like, you could tell he fucked up. You know, and that was – it was what it was. But that does not take anything away from this match. This match was hands down the match of the night. Um, I'm not saying it's better than the ones they've had at PWG or Ring of Honor. But for WWE, this has to be the match between each other they've had – you know, tag team matches or, you know, fatal four ways like this match right here. I thought I thought Owens was going to win and have Zayn pick up the win at SummerSlam, but I guess they didn't go that route. Um, but yeah, Zayn gets the redemption story. All the times that Owens was beating the shit out of him in NXT. Do you guys remember when Owens won the belt the first time? Like, or even how about the night that he made his debut and Sami Zayn won the belt? He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, let's go in the back. Oh, you're my brother. I love you. Slam, slams him right on the ramp, and then power bombs him against the uh, the ring side, like on the, the apron of the ring. And then in the match, the win the belt for Owens, he power bombed him God knows how many times, and, like, that's how he won it. Like, he didn't have to pin him. He didn't have to submit him. He knocked him out by power bombing him. You know, so, and all the times, and even after that, they had a rematch, and Owens fucked him up. They needed something for Zayn to do this. I thought they'd do it bigger at SummerSlam, but I guess they're trying to just revamp everything for SummerSlam. So if they're going to make this the blow-off, I'm happy Zayn won. He deserves it. I mean, as much as Owens is probably my favorite wrestler in the company right now, yeah, Zayn is amazing. You know, Sami Zayn is a top-notch wrestler. Not even going to lie that 
I don't know if he'll ever be a WWE championship owner or a fucking like the holder of the belt, but he fucking deserves it, man. Like, you know, everybody's like, oh, these new guys, they haven't paid their dues. They might have not paid their dues in WWE, but come on, dude. You're saying Roman Reigns has over someone like Sami Zayn or Kevin Owens or AJ Styles or, you know, anybody like that who've been in the business for like 15 fucking years, 15, 20 years almost, you know, like I'm not saying 20, but like 15 years, you know. And I'm not saying Reigns doesn't deserve it, too. He's paid his his dues down to, like, you know, NXT, you know, before it was a big deal, you know, or OVW. Not OVW, but um, sorry. Um, when they were Florida, Florida Championship Wrestling, FCW. You know, from FCW and NXT, like, you know, Rollins, well, who's done a lot, and, like, Ambrose has done a lot before, but Reigns hasn't. He did that. And he did pay his dues, so he deserves to be champion, too. It, like, whoever – I don't think there has to be one guy who has to be champion, like, a champion for that long. Like the Shield, they've been bouncing this belt back and forth, you know, for a minute, and you need other people to be champion. You got to push a lot more people because look what happened with Reigns. He's he gets the ball for three years and then he fucks up by you know doing Adderall, you know. Which come on, man, I don't care if you're prescribed that shit or not. Do it responsibly and tell your fucking you know your company owner, you know, like tell Vince or tell like you know the medics, like hey, this is what I'm on. Let them know what's going on, so you don't make a jackass out of yourself and make Vince look like a fucking idiot. Because that's how a good way to bury yourself, making Vince look like an idiot. He puts all his fucking momentum behind you. He's like all his beliefs, all his trust. And what do you do? You fuck it up. You can't do that, man. Like you can't. Like I've said this before. You know, I'm surprised like Lesnar's not getting like suspended. But, you know, I guess that was a UFC thing, not a WWE thing. And they're saying, oh, the reason he's not getting suspended because he's a part timer. They only do it for full time people. But if you think, though, if you're main eventing everything and you're a contracted wrestler with WWE, it doesn't matter how many fucking dates you have. You know, come on. Like, look at The Rock. I don't know if The Rock's a contracted WWE wrestler. He's a movie star now. So I don't know if he has to go under the same wellness policy. Brock is not a movie star. Brock is a contracted WWE wrestler. Part-time or not, yet you'd think that would matter for something if you're contracted Okay, like what? Okay, like think, put it this way: Say you work at a store, and you work five days a week. Okay, you're a full-time employee. You got to pass a drug test. Okay, do part-time employees not have to pass a drug test? Say you work three days a week. Pretty sure if there's a drug test policy, you have to take that shit and pass it. If you don't pass it, you don't get the fucking job. You don't get paid. So I don't see how that can be any different for Lesnar. But in all actuality. Lesnar draws money. Roman Reigns does not draw money. I'm sorry. Like, Roman Reigns might get kids and girls to buy his fucking shirt, you know, just like John Cena does, but John Cena does a lot better than him. But, dude, Brock draws money. That's why UFC wanted him back, too. UFC knows they make their most money when Brock Lesnar is there. Vince McMahon knows when Brock Lesnar came back, a lot of pay-per-views were fucking bought, or the network got bought higher in, you know, demand. They want Brock Lesnar. People like to watch Brock Lesnar because he's a fucking beast. He's the beast incarnate, as Paul Heyman would say. So, yeah, dude, that's a totally different game. All right. So, yeah, Owens Owens and Zayn, match of the night. If you haven't checked it out, check it out. I don't know. It's, it's hard to say. People have been saying, oh, what's a better match between Owens – or not Owens. What's a better match between Zayn versus Nakamura or Zayn versus Owens? And I think I'm tied on that because they both are different. Nakamura made his debut on that match. Nakamura's entrance in Dallas was awesome. You know, people fucking flipped out. It was great. And the match was, I hate to say, five stars. Nick says chicken wings. <laughs> um, if, if we're going to go with that, I'm going to say that match was a five chicken wing with a bunch of ranch dressing. Like, that shit was great. You know, but same with this one, man. Same with Owens versus Zane. With Nakamura and that, with Nakamura and Zayn, like you saw a just straight up great match with a debut. You know, I mean, kind of hot crowd, man. Like it was great. But then if you look at this match, there's a backstory, and there's always going to be a backstory when it comes to Zayn and Owens. They they're best friends. They've been doing this for years. Then there's always going to be a backstory. I think the story was better in this, and that's what builds it up a lot more. And the match was amazing. So. I have to say it's a tie for me. I think Nick would say the Nakamura versus Zayn match because we've talked about it before. But I'd have to say it's a tie for me because there's different storylines and, you know, there's different, um, you know, shit that goes into it. So 
going into that, let's get into the face that runs the place and uh, Enzo and Kaz. So John Cena and Enzo Kaz versus a club, which is AJ Styles, Carl Anderson, and Luke Gallows. This match, this match is what I thought it would be. I'm a little disappointed that AJ ate the pin. <clears throat> I'm hoping that he wins the match at SummerSlam against Cena because he's been eating a lot of pins now. He ate it on SmackDown. He ate it on here. You know, you can't bury AJ Styles. You know, the fans are really behind him right now. Like, they might be booing him because he's part of the club. But come on, man. Before that, they were like, you know, balls deep behind him. And they still want to see him. He's, you know, he's the Prince of Phenomenal, man. They've taken a line from TNA. You know, he was great. You know, like, and he still is great. And I think it's only going to get bigger. And they have a lot of things they can do with this. If they want to keep the club going, I'll get into that when I get into Raw. But there's a lot of things they can do with this. And I think they need to put someone with AJ. I mean, I don't know how much longer the Young Bucks have on their contract to Ring of Honor or New Japan. And same with Kenny Omega. I don't know how long he has. But, you know, bring somebody. Bring someone up and put them with, you know, AJ. And continue the Bullet Club on that side. Because I think you can put Ballard with the club at some point. But we'll get into that when I get into Raw. But, uh, yeah, you know, AJ eats the pin, you know. You no, know, Enzo was great on the mic, as always, especially on, um, you know, on Raw. He did really well, too. Like, Enzo is this right now, I think he's probably the best on the microphone. He's kind of, it's funny. You see him there with Cena. It's making Cena look bad, and Cena's amazing on the microphone. That's why he does all these, you know, hosting shows. Um. But yeah, um, Cena hit him with the the, um, the A, you know. Um, I think it was a super A, and he gets the win. You know, it was it was a match. I wouldn't say it was good or bad. It was it was a match. Um, what else we got on this fucking card? Becky Lynch for Natalia. I actually predicted this. I thought they'd have the blow off match at SummerSlam, which they might still do. Um, Becky beat her on SmackDown, but Natty won it tonight on Battleground. So she won it, you know, it was a submissions match, beat her with the uh, sharpshooter. And uh, yeah, man, like it was what it was. It wasn't a good or great or horrible match either. It was just a match. And, you know, it's nothing I really had to pay attention to, nothing I really cared about. I mean, and it, I feel really bad for Becky Lynch. Becky Lynch is such a talent. And same with Natalia, man. Natalia, they're both really great wrestlers. If you think about it now, the women's division is stronger than it's, ne- it's ever been. It has been Seriously, so lackluster for the last 15, 10, 15 years. You, know, you have people like, no offense to Layla, you know, but they've only had a few, like, you know, they had Layla and um, who else? Maurice. Um, as much as I love, I love Maria, Maria, she's, she wasn't the greatest wrestler back then. I think she's actually got a little bit better with the stuff in Japan and Ring of Honor. Now she's in TNA. Um, but she's more of a, more of a uh, valet, if anything. Um, who else? What's Undertaker's wife's name? Um. Oh, my God. Uh, Michelle McCool. You know, you have people like that. And, like, come on, man. Like, the only person that was really good in that whole group, though, was Natty. And, you know, then oh, you also had, what's her name, um, Beth Phoenix. And she was good, too. And if I'm forgetting somebody, please tell me. I'm sorry. I'm just it was back in the day. And I'm trying to keep my brain going on what's going on. I kind of just woke up. Um, yeah, but now you got people like Charlotte. You know, when she comes back, you got Emma. You know, if they actually want to, like, you know, not have her do nothing, you have Paige. I think Naomi's great. You got Sasha Banks, Becky Lynch. Um, you got Bailey coming up. Um, you got Carmella, you, who's you know working on herself. She's only going to get better. Um, you got Alexa Bliss. You got Nia Jax. You know, you got a bunch of people who can do you can do shit with. It seems like the SmackDown show is kind of just a waste of time for the women. And I think they need to put Becky with somebody that gets her kind of more towards the championship. You know, like have her like I would love to see this. And I'm, this is my prediction. WrestleMania, they're going to do the four horsewoman match. I think it's going to be Bailey, Becky, Sasha, and Charlotte. I think that's going to be a WrestleMania match. I could be wrong, but that's my prediction. We'll just see if it happens. You know, we'll look back on this, see if I'm right or wrong. Um, you know, uh, but yeah, Natty got the win. Good for her. You know, Natty's kind of eating a lot of pins, a lot of pay per view, so it's good for her to actually win one. Um, the, the last two matches, we got New Day versus the Wyatts. I've kind of already went over this. Um, Xavier Woods kind of... Oh, well, let me talk about the spot with Big E really quick. Man, Big E. Man, he did that whole dive outside and hit... Um, I think it was Strowman? It might have been Strowman or Rowan. I'm not sure. 
But he did that dive, man. It looked like he almost broke his neck. I was so worried for him for a second, man. The way Piggy's a bigger dude, and for him to drop like that, that's kind of scary. It's kind of a scary situation. But, um, yeah, luckily he was okay. So that was good. Um, but, yeah, in the long story short, like, you know, uh, Xavier Woods looked like he was frightened by Bray Wyatt. And then all of a sudden he fucking found his balls and fucking went after Wyatt hella hard. But yeah, at the end of the day, man, he got the sister Abigail, sister Abigail and boom, one, two, three, Wyatt's win. And that goes them to split up. Even on SmackDown, you didn't even see, you know, Wyatt and Rowan standing together. So I'm not sure if that's just like forever breaking him up. And what happens when Harper comes back? Because, you know, he's coming back soon. Is he going to be back with Bray? Is he going to be by himself? Is he going to be back with Rowan? Is he going to just try to team up with Strowman? Like, what's going to happen? Where's he going to be drafted? I guess only time will tell. We'll see with that. But yeah, the Wyatts get the win on this one. And now the main event. The match that everybody's been talking about for seriously about two years now. I mean, whenever they've broken up, they've wanted to see the triple threat match of the Shield. You know, Dean Ambrose, Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins. And this was a good match. I can't say it was a great match. I can't say it was like the best match of the night because that goes to Zane and Owens. But, you know, having the finish the way it was, I think that was kind of cool. You know, you had um, Rollins hit the uh, pedigree and then uh, basically, or how would it go down? I, I know like there was a finish. Yeah. So um, basically, Long story short, Roman Reigns gets hit with the dirty deeds. You know, yeah, he gets hit by dirty deeds, and I think he had to eat the pin here. You know, I think he had to eat the pin because uh, how do you get suspended for thirty days and then come back and you win the championship, or how do you get main event like you're thrown right in the main event? I guess look at Brock; he's going to be in the main event. You know, SummerSlam, which I don't know if it'll be the main event, but they're kind of billing it as the main event. But um, how you going to have him in the event if he's already messed up with a fucking a steroid thing? But, you know, whatever. But yeah, no, Ambrose, I think this makes him look strong. I think this makes him look like the character that he needs to be. He might not be the crazy psychopath, but at least he's the fighting champion that people want. And people really like Ambrose. And what I said before, like, when the Shield was together, as much as I like Rollins now after he left the Shield... I liked him then too, but like I like him more as the cocky, I'm the best, blah blah blah, I'm the man, John, John, John. Like, like I, I like Seth Rollins, man. He's funny, you know, like he's a great wrestler. He's, he's probably, if not the best wrestler in the company, he's in the top three. He's really good. But Ambrose, man, he was my favorite in the Shield. I think he was the one I thought was leading it the whole time because he was always the best on the mic. He kind of like had that weird, like very, he'd jive around, kinda, like move around all crazy, you know, looking like. He was just kind of unstable, you know. And I think he's I think he's kind of like watered that down a little bit since he left the Shield. I still like him a lot, and I think they need to build him up. And so good for him for winning the belt and keeping it. You know, as long as like I thought he would have lost it like after the three matches he had with Rollins. You know, like he saw he had the whole Raw one, and then we didn't know if uh, Rollins won it or not. And then you had the SmackDown one where he won clean, and then now in the pay per view he beat him again. He beat him and Reigns. So yeah. Good, good for uh, Ambrose. He deserves it, man. Like they're all really good wrestlers. They're only going to be more. Their their stock is only going to rise higher and higher. These three. As much as I don't like, I'm not a big. I can't say I don't like him, but I'm not a fan of Roman Reigns. They need to do something different with him. Maybe like a heel turn. I'm not sure if Vince wants to do that. I think he sees money in him as a face. But if the fans don't like him, you can't be a face. I'm sorry. You're not going to sell merchandise. You're not going to get the people behind you. You got to do something different to do this. Look at The Rock. I've said this before. The Rock had, you know, the Rocky Maya via babyface thing, and nobody liked him. Everybody fucking hated him. You saw the signs, die, Rocky, die, which I think was a little fucking extreme. But uh, you had those signs. And then when he was like, fuck this, I'm going to go with the Nation of Domination. I'm going to be The Rock. People started liking him because he was that cocky heel, man. He was an asshole. You know, and then like later on, you can turn him face and people loved him. They never they never stopped liking The Rock. People might have booed him, but like deep down, they, everybody, you can ask anybody nowadays who's my age, you know, about 30 or higher, you know, or maybe even a little bit young, maybe 25 up. You ask them like, damn, who's your favorite wrestling? Oh, even people who don't watch wrestling. I don't really watch wrestling back in the day, but yeah, I think my favorite was The Rock. Yeah, because The Rock was fucking entertaining. But if people don't remember, you know, if you don't watch it all the time like we do probably, if you're listening to this podcast, The Rock was fucking hated. Before he was The Rock, he was Rocky Maivia, this fucking 
vanilla baby face, like, who's no one gave a shit about. He was just fucking, just, he was the shits. You know, and then you had the ladder match, you know, later on with The Rock versus uh, Triple H, you know, The Nation versus DX. That was a great match, you know. And then you had all this stuff with The Rock just transitioning, being The Rock, not being Rocky Maivia. That character died, you know. And they can do the same with Roman Reigns, you know. And this is what I'm going to go into Raw. And um, I'll get back into this fucking thing. But remember about Roman Reigns and this heel turn. I'll get into it. All right. Think about this. You have two four-way matches. That's how they started off, by the way. The first genera- or the first new day, or the era of the first day of Raw, they have all the people on the entrance, besides Finn Balor. And I think they should have kept him off until his match, but they didn't. And that's just me nitpicking. So you have Mick and Stephanie in the ring, and they're like, we're going to do a four-way match. You know, we had the belt in our hands. Seth Rollins could have won it. But no, Roman, you had to fuck it up for us. And Roman, I don't think you're a good guy. I don't think you're a bad guy. I think you're a loser. I thought that was a great line by Stephanie. That was hilarious. I laughed my ass off. Um, but yeah, so they decide to have two four-way matches, and the winners of that would face each other. And then they will face the automatic guy who goes to SummerSlam to go for the belt, Seth Rollins. So, I mean, I like that storyline that they keep Seth, you know, as like basically the guy, the, the man. You know, like for the authority, basically. So he already gets a buy. He gets to be at SummerSlam regardless. You know, so you had um, you had these four-way matches. And uh, let me see if I can think of the top of my head who it was. It was Cesaro, Owens, Zayn. Not Zayn, but um, sorry. Cesaro, Owens, Balor, and... Fuck, who was the last guy? I forget. And then the other side, you had uh, Zayn and Roman. Sheamus was in one of them. I forget if he was on the other one or not. But long story short, Balor wins his side. Reigns wins his side. I mean, and that's what it had to be. You had to have some kind of thing going into it. Like, oh, fake, Balor's not going to fucking win this by automatically. And then at the same time, you can't think that Roman's going to win automatically either. There's been a lot of speculation of having Seth versus Roman at the pay-per-view. So a lot of people probably thought that was going to happen. Me, I kind of thought I kind of thought that, like, damn, you can't just have uh, Ballard come in his first night and just lose. So, I mean, it was very interesting to see how they were going to roll that down. Like, were they going to have, you know, Roman win or lose? How is it going to go down? And anybody saying that fucking Reigns is getting buried, you're fucking tripping. He won a fatal four-way match to go into the main event of Raw to have a chance to go for this. They want to go in a different direction. Don't think of it as a burial. Think of a different direction. You know Reigns is going to get that belt sooner or later. You know, but come on. What would you rather see? Reigns versus Rollins again? Or wouldn't you want to see uh, Rollins versus fucking Balor? You know, it made Raw interesting. It made Raw something to talk about because Balor won that match. You know, Reigns is going to go for the spear. He gets the sling blade hit on him. Then he comes back and does that double kick into the corner, does the coup de gras. Boom! You got a star right there. You made a star on the first night he was there. And I know people are going to say, oh, Balor's already a star. Not on the main roster. He was a star in NXT. He's a star in New Japan. Yeah, he was not a star on the main roster. If you don't watch NXT, you have no fucking clue who Finn Balor is. Sorry, I'm, I'm being honest. I love Finn Balor. I think he's amazing. My dad knows him as the Irish guy. He was like, "Oh, who's like uh, my dad? Who do you got? You got Balor or this? Well, who? Uh, which one's the the uh, the Irish guy? Like Finn Balor?" He's like, "Oh yeah, I want that guy. I like that guy." You know, he, like my dad watches sometimes NXT with me. And he likes Balor. You know, so you know you're making a star right there, having him beat Roman Reigns clean because Roman doesn't do the job clean much. So fuck yeah, man, good job for fucking for Balor to do that. And I think I'm. I think that's going to be a match. Like that's a chance to be a match of the year candidate too. Of Balor versus Rollins at SummerSlam. That's going to be great, man. They're both technicians of what they do, man. They can both fly around. They can both put you in fucking arm bars and headlocks. They can do everything, man. They're both like they're this generation style of wrestler. You know, back in the day, you had people like The Rock and Undertaker and Stone Cold, who are the bigger guys who could beat the shit out of you, but can still work really fucking well, and they can talk on the mic. You know, Rollins and Balor are not as good on the mic. They're good. I mean, don't get me wrong. They're, they're very talented. They're not like Stone Cold or The Rock, you know, but 
for this generation, they're good. They're not CM Punk either. You know, they're not, um, who else? Enzo Amore. Like, they're not people like that. But, dude, their wrestling caliber is second to none. They're both amazing. This, this is going to tear down the fucking house, especially in that hot crowd in fucking Brooklyn, the Barclays Center. That shit is going to be fucking crazy. So you had the matches go down, and yeah, Balor gets the big victories, man. He wins the four, the Fatal 4-Way in his group, and then he beats Roman Reigns. Clean as a fucking sheet, man. I mean, man, that's just, it's it's great. It's good for wrestling. It's good to have people talking about it like that. You know, as, as much as people like want to say, oh, Raw, three hours, drag on all the time, this one didn't drag on. This was actually very entertaining fucking start to finish. Um... Before I get into the the girls match between or the women's match between I don't want to say girls the women's match between uh, Charlotte and Sasha Banks for the belt which was awesome I want to get into this whole Mister Irrelevant thing with uh, with Curtis Axel they had the returning um, Neville come back Adrian Neville now just Neville um, face Curtis Axel and they're like oh he's Mister Irrelevant. You know, I kind of agree with, you know, Don Tony from the Don Tony and Kevin Cashel show and Breakfast with Blasey. He's like, he should be Mr. Imperfect. You know, have everything like to do the vignettes and all that stuff and have him just fuck up. But the only thing different I would do with that is try to say, you know what, because he had that shirt, I'm better than perfect. You know, blah, blah, blah. Just call himself Mr. Perfect. It doesn't have to be Mr. Imperfect. Let him be Mr. Perfect, but let him just fuck everything up, dude. Like, let that be the, the gimmick. Like, yes, and I'm perfect, you know, and he does something and he just fucks it up. You know, I think that'd be funnier than calling him Mr. Imperfect because he acknowledges that he sucks. Let him think that he's just the best thing going. Better than, like, you know, the newest fucking coolest thing since sliced bread. And then he's just as miserable. You know, he just fucking sucks. Or even if he wins, let it be some, by some fluky way. Like, okay, you know how Sting would do the Stinger Splash? Have somebody, or like Big Kaz does that splash. Have somebody, like, you know, like he's laying there. He just moves or they over jump him, hit their head. And he falls over into a roll-up somehow you know, on accident and gets one, two, three. And he acts like he planned that out, like he's the best. Oh, I'm Mr. Perfect. You know, let him let him think of that. Like, let him be like some funny joke character, but they, that he's the shit. If you put him as Mr. Imperfect, it's already going to die as a slow death because he already knows that he sucks. Like, he's going to basically go in there like, yeah, I'm, I'm Mr. Imperfect, I'm a piece of shit. But if you go as Mr. Perfect, you know, because he's the son of Mr. Perfect... He's going to think that he is the fucking man. He can do no wrong. And the whole time he just sucks or gets lucky. I think that would be really funny. And I think they should do something cool with Bo Dallas too. Bo Dallas is hilarious. They don't need to be together by any stretch of the imagination like they were before in the social outcasts. You know, which will get me to Heath Slater Heath later when we talk about SmackDown. But yeah, man, they should do something with these guys. They're talented fucking individuals in their own right in different ways. I think they're more talented right now than Darren Young is. You mean, or... Uh, I think they're funnier than Sheamus. I think uh, I think Bo Dallas, in my opinion, uh, people might not like this. I like him more than Zack Ryder. <clears throat> oh, let me drink this coffee really quick. <sighs> Sorry about that. But uh, yeah, man, I, I think they should do something. Neville gets the victory, you know. But whatever, Mister Irrelevant, I guess. Uh, Kurt Zack lost. Um, another thing before I actually get into the women's match, the New Day segment. The New Day, like, they're doing, like, they're going to pick somebody out, and they had, um, what the fuck was the guy's name? Sonny Boy. Oh, my God, that was horrible. I love the New Day. Don't get me wrong, man. Like, fuck, I might buy some Budio cereal. I mean, Nick has the New Day socks. Like, dude, it's it's no surprise. Like, man, there's no secret that we love the New Day. New Day's hilarious. But, man, this segment was brutal. It was not good at all. Thank God for Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows. The only thing better is they would have hit Sonny Boy with a fucking magic killer, too. I wonder if Sonny Boy kept Kofi's vest when they threw the shirt at him, because uh, Kofi's vest was still hooked to it. <laughs> I'm sure they had to give it back. I'm sure he gave it back. But, um, yeah, you should, I'm not sure if he was some fan like that they planted there or if he was a local wrestler. He should have been a local wrestler, because if they would have hit the magic killer on Sonny Boy on the outside, that would have caused some heat. That would have been great. That would have been really cool. But yeah, you know, uh, they come in there, like they're doing the whole Sunny Boy thing. The Gallows and Anderson comes in there, fucks him up. And that must mean, like, I mean, I'm not saying it's a sure thing, but I only can predict that that's going to be a match at SummerSlam for the belts. And I think, here's what I'm thinking, man, and this is like my early prediction. So if Nick hears this, which he better is his fucking show too, I'm taking an AJ at SummerSlam, I'm taking the club at SummerSlam, and I'm taking Balor. I think they want to have the club on all the belts, man, and then you can align him up. So... 
Well, yeah, we'll get into that in a second. Um, now getting into the women's championship match. This match put a fucking smile on my face. Not only for Sasha winning, but the way she won it. For once, she did it against one of her better friends. Her and Charlotte, they're cool, and they're, she, they're both four horse women. But really, if you look at it, the way that she won it was so awesome. If you've ever listened to any interviews by Sasha Banks, she's always said her biggest inspiration and her favorite wrestler of all time is Eddie Guerrero. So when Dana Brooke was trying to get in there and trying to interfere and all that stuff, she grabs the belt, you know, that you know Charlotte had earlier, grabs the belt and throws it up and has Dana catch it, and then she falls down like she hit it. The referee's already warned Dana once earlier in the match that, you know, if you keep fucking up, I'm going to kick you out. She, they see that. She gets kicked out. That was awesome. You know I mean? That was her favorite wrestler as a kid, man. And when you see people who love wrestling their whole life and they go and they do something really cool like this, it only puts a smile on your face because it shows that someone like that really fucking put their determination and the love and the passion behind them and they did it. They fucking worked their ass off and they did it. So congratulations to Sasha Banks, man. I'm fucking proud of you. Fucking, I know you don't know me from anybody else. I'm just a fucking random dude who does a fucking podcast. But, man, good for you. You fucking deserve it. And you worked your ass off doing the indies and stuff. Even though Joey Numbers buried you. Just kidding, Joey Numbers. Wrestling Soup, for anybody who doesn't know, Wrestling Soup is the coolest fucking podcast. Way cooler than ours. Check it out. Um, but, yeah, no... Um, if you ever hear the story of Joey Numbers, as you know, he's a referee, he does, you know, indies and stuff. He told Sasha, yeah, you probably shouldn't do this, you know, blah, 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 blah. And if you look at Sasha now, you know, she's a champion. It's it's funny. You know, um, so yeah, Sasha wins the fucking belt, man. She deserves it. She fucking worked her ass off. Not to say that Charlotte didn't. So Charlotte had a long run, and good for her, man. So let's get a little bit in the details of this match. The, uh, the outside dive that Sasha did to Charlotte, man, that scared the fuck out of me. Just like the Big E one. I mean, this one might have scared me a little bit more because, man, she landed, like, right on her fucking head and neck. And, like, that was scary. I think Charlotte should have caught her a little bit better. But, um, yeah, man, like, those backflips that saw, uh, Charlotte was doing, especially the one on the outside of the ring. Jesus Christ, Charlotte. <laughs> man, I'm happy that you were a gymnast before this because that was amazing. You know, and just all, like, the setups. And, like, even Charlotte saying, you'll never get this title from me. You'll never beat me. And, like, you know, then she hits her with the fucking bank statement and wins the belt. Like, God, it's stuff like that. It reminds me when her dad lost her retirement match and Shawn Michaels kicked him square in the fucking face. But right before Shawn kicked Rick in the fla- uh, Ric Flair in the face, he was like, I'm sorry. I love you. And then super kicks him right off his fucking feet, you know? shit like that man it's just the little fucking things that make it better just like with maurice like when maurice could have said you know oh don't rko my husband again i'll get on smackdown the little things make things good in wrestling and right there what charlotte did with sasha banks like you're never gonna win this and then charlotte gets fucking hit with the bank statement and loses it reminds me also when it was oscar and nia jackson nxt when fucking Oscar started doing those kicks and then nia jackson on the ground on her hands and knees and just like, st- like stood up on her knees and just yells at fucking that primal scream and uh, at Oscar. Oscar comes back and just fucking knees her in the face and ends it. Man, shit like that. Just the passion, like the smallest things that make it really awesome. So I'd have to say for SmackDown or for Raw, as much as the Fatal 4-Way matches were good and as much as Finn Balor winning was a big deal, I'd have to say Charlotte versus fucking Sasha was the match of the night. I, I just, I don't know. I think women's wrestling in WWE, I think it's going to be a big deal very soon if it's not already. You know, this match really did something for the women's division. You know, it's not like, oh, we're going to have Braun Panties matches anymore. It's like, no, we're doing some missing matches and we're going to do some matches that are going to blow your fucking brains away because this is how good this is. You know, and yeah, Sasha and Charlotte, they're leading the revolution, man. As they said, the Divas Revolution, which I think it's kind of funny. It wasn't AJ Lee trying to do this whole divas thing like they wanted the divas you know make divas matter or deep make de- give divas a chance i mean like i think she gets i think she deserves a little bit of credit for this because right after that happened you know stephanie was like oh diva revolution and brings everybody up which was cool they needed it because they only had fucking swimsuit models like the fucking you know even marie's and shit you know like they needed wrestlers you know i'm not taking them away from the bellas you know what i mean i think they did what they had to do and i think they're getting better you know i think um I think uh, Nikki's last run, she got a lot better, even though she was kind of hurt, you know. And um, if you look at the match of Stephanie versus Brie Bella, man, people cared about that for a while. So, you know, good for them, too. I mean, but I think now women's wrestling is evolving to being good again. 
I mean, like you have people like you look at like Lita and fucking Trish. That was a good fucking time for wrestling for women, you know. Yeah, they still had the Braun Panty matches, but they're still tired. Like the same time, they still had great matches too. But I don't think they're going to do the Braun Panty matches anymore. I think they're going to do straight fucking just really good women's wrestling, and that's what really needs to happen. You need to make it look like it's a real professional sport. Look at UFC, man. I ordered UFC one time just to watch Ronda Ra- Ronda Rousey fight, you know, and. I didn't. I didn't get it to have you know other people fucking like you know. I didn't get it for watching other dude wrestler fighters. I got it for Ronda Rousey, and maybe sooner or later they're gonna get it just to watch you know Sasha Banks versus Bailey or Sasha Banks versus Charlotte or Charlotte versus Becky. They're gonna fucking get it going where it's gonna be just girls for what they are, women for what they are, and they're gonna do a good job. And you know it's gonna be like that. You know maybe that won't be the case soon, but. At least you know that you'll have a good women's match there, not a fucking piss break. So good for fucking Sasha. Good for fucking Charlotte. You know, good for women's wrestling in a whole. Um, let's see. What else? Um, let's get into SmackDown for a bit. Um, I like the way SmackDown started. Um, yeah, they had the, you know, it had a different look to it. New intro, new theme song is all right. Um, new set, kind of. Um, they had the announcer still by the ring, which is fine. Um, the way it started though, they had like, you know, you had like the whole walking segment with Daniel Bryan and Shane, like kind of like you're the third person in the room. Like you're talking to them, like you're talking one-on-one with them. And then you get out to the ring side, like the, the entrance area, then Daniel Bryan's music hits and then it goes widescreen. And then all the wrestlers in the ring, you follow them out there. That's a really cool intro, man. That's different. It's awesome. I think that was a pretty good way of starting it up. And then um, after that, you have um, you have uh, the six-pack challenge they're going to do for uh, the belt, like the number one contender. And you're, kidding, you're sitting there, and he's like, okay, it's going to be Bray Wyatt, John Cena, uh, Baron Corbin, um, Dolph Ziggler, and AJ Styles. Can't believe I almost forgot AJ. And uh, it's like, okay, that's only five, Daniel. Like, I know you have concussions and all, but that's only five, buddy. Like, even Shane was counting on his fingers. I like what they do here. And the sixth spot is going to be earned in a battle royal. We want to give everybody a chance. I thought that was great, dude. If you're trying to make this a brand that's, you know, a new generation, you're trying to give everybody a chance, that's the way to do it. It was won by Apollo Crews. Apollo Crews, I think, is a star in the making. I don't like him right now with his gimmick, but you can't deny how great he is as a wrestler. That guy is great. So you have Apollo Cruz, and he um, he wins the battle royal, man. Like I, I, I thought Alberto Del Rio could have won it. I thought a few other people had a chance. You know, even Zack Ryder could have won it. But um, I think having Apollo Cruz was the way to go. And then uh, let's see what else happened. Uh, Sasha, or not Sasha, but um, Becky versus Natty happened again. Becky won this one with a disarmor. Um, what else? Miz versus Randy Orton. They did a whole Miz TV. You thought Miz was actually talking about himself, uh, talking about Randy Orton, but he was actually talking about himself and interviewing himself, which I thought was really, really funny. I thought that was great. Then Orton comes out, you know, making some uh, who's the pitcher, who's the catcher jokes to the Miz. Uh, Maurice says, yeah, he'll fight you. And this is where I say or later on, you know, where Orton whoops his ass, you know, and whatever. And he hits two RKOs. Maurice didn't even seem like he gave a fuck. And how are you going to do that? That's your husband. Like, that. you're the fucking valet, dude. you got to make it matter. And so I was kind of a little pissed off at that. But whatever. It's Miz versus Orton. I don't think SmackDown was as good a show as Raw, but I thought it was good. I mean, I thought it was better than the most of the fucking SmackDowns they have. Um, what else? Um, yeah, I, I think the main event of the, uh, the six-way match, I thought that was good. You know, I don't like that AJ ate the pin again, you know, but, you know, Cena looked powerful like he always does, hitting everybody with an AA. Bor- Corbin almost escaped it, you know, he escaped it once, but then he got thrown right back into it. Um, and, yeah, man, if they're trying to revamp this and make this a new thing, I'm happy that Ziggler won. Am I excited about the match like I'm excited about Balor and Rollins? No. But if they're trying to do something different, and it's good that they're giving fucking Ziggler a fucking chance, man. He deserves it, man. He's been eating so many pins or being on so many pre-shows or stupid, stupid fucking gimmicks. Who remembers when he won the belt against Alberto Del Rio when he cashed in when he was with AJ and Big E? People fucking popped for that, man. They marked out for that shit. 
So did I. I was like, oh shit, Ziggler's about to do it. Fuck yeah, Ziggler, go Ziggles. You know, and then after that, you know, how about when he was the last survivor in the fucking Survivor Series match? People love that. People want to get behind Ziggler. But if you keep on letting him eat pins, he gets irrelevant. There you go, Mr. Irrelevant. But then, yeah, man, if you can build him back up, Ziggler could be a big fucking deal, man. He's a great wrestler. He's great on the mic. Let him be something. So that goes to show, man. Though after that, who are other feuds going to be? Who's Wyatt going to go after? Because you know he has to have a match at SummerSlam, right? Okay. What about, you already know Cena's going to face, uh, <sighs> sorry about that. Uh, Cena's going to face Styles. You know fucking Orton's going to face Lesnar. Are you going to put Apollo Crews versus Baron Corbin? Because I can see that. They've kind of like, they knocked each other out the um, in that uh, one battle royal prior to this on Raw. I mean, so there can, I can see that being a match, Corbin versus, um, versus Apollo Crews. They did it on NXT and Corbin won. So maybe they have a rematch on SmackDown at SummerSlam. Who knows? We'll see. I'm sure they'll do some more storylines going into this. And like I said earlier, man, I was a little butthurt about uh, not seeing, um, not getting to see um, American Alpha. I think, I mean, at least it's something to build to, but I think they could have done that. I think they could have had them come earlier. I mean, I, I think that was one of the main reasons I wanted to watch it, and they weren't there. Another thing, Shelton Benjamin coming back, man. The gold standard, man, like golden fucking boy right there, man. You got fucking uh, Shelton Benjamin, who's amazing. A very, I think, very underrated wrestler. I think they should bring back Charlie Haas, too, and get the greatest, the world's greatest tag team together and have them go against American Alpha. Can you imagine that match? If they can do that at SummerSlam, man, that will catch my attention. I'll love it. Um, What else? Oh, yeah, Rhino. Rhino going the fuck out of Heath, Heath Slater. Heath Slater is throwing a really good uh, promo up. Yeah, you know... The whole sign resume thing was stupid. You know, he should have said sent in my resume or send in a resume, but he said sign a resume. Sign a resume. I'm Heath Slater, baby. Three man band. A social outcast. Uh, the Nexus. What was the other one after the Nexus that he said? Um, I for fucking I forget what they're called. Um, but yeah, man. Like they had all those guys. Like they named all the crews. Like check out my shit on the WWE Network for nine ninety nine. And, you know, he Slater's like, yeah, well, well, well I'm, the, I'm the number one free agent. And then, yeah, you had uh, Shane's like, I'm looking at the number one free agent. And he turns around, and, you know, he's thinking that it was him. No, it was Rhino. Gored the fuck out of him. Yeah, and I got Rhino. They said they're going to bring out more fucking wrestlers. They're going to bring out order wrestlers. And I guess right now they have Sheldon Benjamin and they have Rhino. Is that the end of it? I doubt it. They need more stars. You can tell the lack of star power when they did that fucking six-man thing. Because do you think they're going to have Corbin in there? Do you think that they could have had Cruz not be in there? No, man. If Orton wasn't fighting against Lesnar, they could have had Orton in there. But they need other people. Like, if they had brought Kurt Angle in, man, I would love to see Kurt Angle in that fucking six-pack challenge. And there's a lot of people you can bring up to actually do that shit. But, you I mean, for right now, Apollo Cruz and Corbin, they're fine there. I think one of them should win the Intercontinental Championship, though. And I think it'd been better. Um, what else? Oh, yeah, a few things. I want to go back on Raw for a minute. Seeing uh, Braun Strowman come out the way he did and just squash that jobber, and same with Nia Jax doing that, I think that's good. I think you need enhance, uh, enhancement talent to fucking put these monsters over, and when they actually you know face the bigger stars, they can start squashing them, kind of like what they did with Ryback and a few other people, the Ascension. Um, when you actually get them against the bigger stars and have someone actually beat them, they'll make it more of a big deal because you're like, damn, these guys are beasts. You know, so I think that was good. All right, going into SummerSlam, I told you I had an idea about Roman Reigns. You're going to have SummerSlam be – I think he's also going to face Owens, by the way. I think it's going to be Roman Reigns versus Kevin Owens in fucking SummerSlam, but I'm not going to get into that until in a couple of weeks when I actually have Nick on the show. I have a feeling at SummerSlam it's going to be Balor versus Rollins. What if Roman Reigns turns heel this way? Say, you know what? Maybe I was wrong this whole fucking time. Maybe Rollins was right. He bought in. He didn't sell out. He bought in. And then when Balor, like say like something, say the referee gets knocked out, you know, and you have Balor and Reigns in there, Roman Reigns or Balor and Rollins in there, and all of a sudden out comes Roman Reigns, and you think he's going to spear Rollins, he turns around and spears the shit out of Balor, he's like he just leaves the ring, and then right there referee gets up one two three Rollins gets the victory, you kind of aligned Rollins with Seth, or Rollins with Reigns again, you know I know it's not the whole Shield, but then right there. You'd be like, what the fuck? Now, either make him more of a baby face, or you can go the other way with it, too. You can have 
maybe say he doesn't do that. Maybe the referee gets knocked out and the club comes out and helps fucking Balor win the belt and makes Balor a fucking, you know, a heel. Kind of like what they did with uh, him and Cena, you know, with fucking AJ. You know, who knows? There's a lot of ways you can go with it. Now, I'm very interested to see what they do. Maybe it's just be a clean fucking match between the two because, damn, dude, that shit's going to bur- that's going to burn down the house. That's going to be a great match. We'll see. You know, um, I'm very interested to see Nick's opinion on all this. You know, like I said, he's going like he's handling some personal shit. Like, I mean, like just, you know, business stuff, nothing crazy. Um, yeah, he'll be back hopefully next week and we'll get his opinion on a lot of stuff and the upcoming weeks Raw and SmackDown. And yeah, guys, I have nothing else to say besides uh, follow us on Twitter on the Wrestling Gremlins. Uh, it's, it's actually Wrestling Gremlins or Wrestle Gremlins. I'm not sure how you define it. Um, I know you look the name, it's Wrestling Gremlins, but I guess the other name is Wrestle Gremlins. But yeah, I'm sure if you put Wrestling Gremlins Podcast, you'll find it. Um, you can follow us at uh, our Facebook as the Wrestling Gremlins Podcast. You can find our episodes every fucking week on the rest, um, under Wrestling Gremlins on YouTube and Mixcloud. And uh, yeah, man, I hope this solo show wasn't too horrible for you guys. Um, yeah, man, I'm Bobby, and uh, for the Wrestling Gremlins podcast, I hope everybody has a great week, and yeah, man, night. Nice.